There's this girl. Her name is Lonnie. And she gave me this tape and said, you have got to listen to this. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a very special Gone Home spoiler cast. Spoiler cast! Of GameScoop. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. I'm joined by Greg Miller. Marty Christmas S- duck. Mar- <laughs> Marty Sleva. Hey, guys. And we're very lucky to have yeah. the writer and designer of Gone Home here, Steve Gainer, joining us today. Hey. Hey. Thanks for having me. Hey. Appreciate it. We love the game, yeah. obviously. I also appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks for playing it. I hope it goes without saying, we're going to be talking about spoilers We're for spoiling Gone the game. Yeah. Wait yeah. a second, is that why you call it that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So hopefully you play through it yet. And if you haven't, stop the video and go play yeah, it. Go get only, it off yeah. Steam right now. Yeah, It'll only take you a couple dangerous. hours. You'll be glad you did. Then yeah. come back and join us. Greg will probably gift it to you if you bother him on Twitter. <laughs> 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 I saw you doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've all played the game. Yeah. So we, we all agree. So we can finally talk about it openly and freely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a, p- a question you posed before we started. My burning game. question is... Sam. Lonnie. This is a big one to start out are with. They, I know. Well, I don't care. <laughs> you are better they? have played the game or you have no idea what the hell Greg is Again, about to ask. Fuck you if you didn't yet. That's not my problem anymore. I finally get to talk to you. I've been dancing around it all afternoon on all right. these different questions. All right, let's make it happen. Um, Sam and Lonnie, are they still together in your head? You wrote this story. It's about you know this coming of age romance Discovering your sexuality, falling in love, all these different things. In 95, right? Yeah. yeah. When they, all the stuff that so the video game years is later. about. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that old chestnut. Yeah. So yeah, almost 20 years later. They're 37. Well, what do you think? <laughs> no. I, I don't, I don't want to start this. <laughs> I, I think no way in hell. Like, no way in hell. That I, I think they had a really nice, passionate, brief fling. Yeah. And then grew up a little bit and realized that the person you like in high school is probably just an awful human being. <laughs> I don't know, Wait a second, not, which oh, one of them is awful? I, I really hope you like didn't meet your wife in high school or something. That's I actually <laughs> did. I've been with my wife since I was 17 years old. <laughs> <laughs> What's up now? Oh, really? Actually true. Wow. Actually true. Wow. <laughs> so then they're totally together. Yeah. Head. Let's assume. No, I don't, I don't know. Um, I mean, they're, they're very, you know, they're very different people than like myself, right? right? Like, and it was a different, I mean, it wasn't that different at the time. I was 17 and... 99, I guess. Uh, but um, I don't know. I mean, the thing is, from my point of view, I don't really know what happens after the credits roll, right? Mm-hmm. Like, everything that's it's in the game, it's like, I can say, yes, this did or didn't or whatever. But, like, I don't know. The thing that's interesting is they are in a really tough position, right? Because in the story, Lonnie has an enlistment date, she's going to basic training, and then she just bails. Mm-hmm. So that means that you're AWOL from yeah, that's the U.S. military. Yeah. Like, military police are actually going to be looking for you, and you can do time for that shit, right? Yeah. So, like, they so would either... They, they would, yeah, the exactly. Clinton administration. Everything, everything goes. <laughs> <laughs> they, they would, like, they would either have to go to Canada or Mexico, which, you know, Lonnie's family's from Mexico, so mm-hmm. maybe they do that, or just try to hide out somewhere. But it's, like, it's not going to be... Easy for them. They're two you know. dumb kids. All they know how to do is make zines. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like it's like if you had to go like make a life for yourself when you're 17 fucking years old, like that wouldn't be easy, right? No, so, no. so I think it, I think there would definitely be a ton of challenges in front of them. But I don't, I don't have, like I don't have the timeline in my head where I'm like, definitely this is this for, is for, what 2013 like, looks like for out. them. Yeah, yeah exactly. But well, Sam I mean, and Lonnie's kid comes home and no one's home. <laughs> <laughs> Where mom and mom go? <laughs> uh, but yeah, like the the thing that's interesting is like people can have different theories about it, which is which is really cool because you know it's just like we know what the jumping off point is, and I I don't really know what happens any better than anybody else does. I mean, where do because so both of these guys think fuck no. Yeah. <laughs> what do you what do you think, Dan? I, I think it's unlikely, but you know, not not impossible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it could be. It could turn into an orange is the new black sort of situation where they get into some trouble, and then Sam decides she's not really a lesbian. And then, <laughs> I'm just saying this is what orange is the new can black. We, also, orange is the new black. Can spoiler. we just say that Gone Home was a prequel to Orange is the New Black? <laughs> yeah, I, like probably, that too. I like that a lot that's too. Probably what happened. That's what was the What was the idea you originally started out with, and then how close was that to what you ended up with? I mean, it was actually. It was, in a way, it it's very similar, but also. I don't know. So, so we had started from a point of we want to make this game where you explore a house and you find out the story of the people that mm-hmm. live there. And so if you're only going to be in the house, the conflict, like the drama has to be between the family members, right? It has to be like in the, the space. And so our question starting out was like, what's the, what's the conflict between like the parents and the kid, right? And so we kind of started from a point of like, you know, Romeo and Juliet, you know, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, like the kid falls in love with somebody the parents don't approve of. 
but Montague's and Capulet's is not really a 2013 kind of <laughs> concern or even a 1995 kind of concern. So, you know, we were like, okay, if the kid is gay and the parents don't approve, and that could be like, you know, a very like serious driver of, of drama with these characters. And so that from that point, you know, we were like, okay, we've signed up to write this gay character. It's going to be about this family. But the way that's different is at the end of development, the conflict was no longer about like, oh, well, there are these two characters and the parents don't approve of them, or you know, they're they're kind of like fighting these external forces that are trying to push them apart. It became much more about like the two characters' differences and like the directions their lives were going in and, and what they wanted and how that was like causing challenges for them. Because as we started to write it, it was like because I worked with um, Carla, who's another co-founder of the company, as like my story partner, and we were working on the story, and it was like them just kind of having to fight against other people telling them, you know, you can't be together was nowhere near as interesting as, well, they both want to be together, but there's these different aspects in their lives that make that hard, and, like, are they going to be able to be together at the yeah, end or yeah. not? So, you know, it's it, it started from a place where, where a lot of the elements are the same, but really, like, the identity of it was a lot different by the, by the time we finished. Did, did you always have the idea to sort of, uh, it, it's rooted in 95, but based on the artifacts you find and the characters you discover, it goes back, you know, all the way to, you know, decades back. Like, a lot of the, uh, to me, sort of the linchpin of all the events falls, like, right around the Kennedy assassination with, right. with Terry and uh, Oscar. I mean, we, we had always wanted for it not just to be a story that's about the here and now, you know, that's not like, okay, the entire story takes place in 95. Like, we were really interested in what's the, the family history yeah. and how does that impact, you know, what happened. Um, but we, you know, we discovered a lot about who the characters were and when all those events took place and stuff. Like as we yeah. were developing the game, yeah. like I didn't know what the ending of the game was until like two weeks before we went in to record the the final voice session. Like we were really figuring stuff what out. What else were you kicking around? I mean, was it just watching it develop, or was it what? Because I mean, I, I think most the game's creepy, right? And like yeah. They definitely, yeah. The first time I saw the attic, I was like, oh fuck, what's going on <laughs> up there? It's like when you go into. The, I keep telling the story, but you know, I was playing all by myself in the house, silent. I had headphones on, yeah. till in my lap. Steimer playing Guild Wars down the hall. <laughs> and like I'd been dead quiet and then I went into the under the stairs cupboard with the Satan stuff and I just went, Oh shit! Oh, yeah. And then I like ran upstairs once I had the key, you know what I mean? And I was expecting to find them hung or blown I, away I or know, something. Yeah. Blown away. Well, I, just, well, I, God, God. Away. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting dot 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 blown away. I mean I went into it not knowing anything. Yeah, you know, maybe just too. knowing that it was supposed yeah. to be very good. So you know, you, you you don't know if it's like a is it a ghost story or like yeah. what, what yeah. Happened, am I dead? Did I die in a in a plane crash on yep. my way home? And yep. uh, or w was everyone like abducted by aliens? <laughs> like I, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, I guess you're doing this on purpose. You're sort of leaving these not really clues, but like sort of but like sort suggestions. Of, yeah, I mean the game in a lot of ways is about misdirection, right? Because yeah. like you start out and the first thing you read is the note on the door and it says like. Don't try to figure out where I am. We'll see each other again someday. Mm -hmm. And unless that's like super figurative and she means like in heaven or something, yeah. then, <laughs> then, then you start out basically with the character being like, I've left. Don't try to figure out where I've gone. But, you know, that's. And, and then throughout the whole game, other, you know, aspects of the story and just the setting and the tone push you to be like, oh, is, is she dead or is she still in the house or, you yeah, know, yeah, but yeah. you get to the end and it's like, no, she's gone and she doesn't want you to yeah, know where she yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. But, like, finding out the specifics of that and, like, getting pushed towards other possibilities of, like, could it be this, could it be that, before you come back around to, like, oh, I see why she left and why she left me that note yeah. and everything is kind of the journey through the, through the game. Sure. Um, but, you know, it, it, we never, it never was in as dark a place as, like, and everybody died, you know, or, or like you were saying, you're, you were a ghost the whole time or anything, you know? Like, we'd always... Wanted it to be a, a more like kind of plausible, like relatable kind of thing, where it's like, oh, this could have happened to people I know. Yeah. You know, this isn't like a melodramatic thing where it's right. like the parents, you know, drove their car off a cliff or something, yeah. right? It's it's just like you find out about more mundane events, but you care about them because like you get to know these characters by sure. by playing the game. Well, that was the crazy thing, right? Of like starting that game knowing nothing mm -hmm. and it's storming, it's all this, and I get in there and you know I'm turning on every light because I I, keep, yeah. I kept I kept like walking through the, doors and like yeah. turning on a light and then I like walk, like try to trigger things by going into the door <laughs> frame and like look for ghosts or whatever. <laughs> but like you know like playing the message right and like either you get there and like you're downstairs. I've been in the house maybe five minutes and I play the message machine in my in my game, you know, and it's like it's it turns out that that's Lonnie, right? Like talking happy 
happily the first time crying the second time yeah. and like please pick up the phone please pick up the phone and it reminded me so much of Walking Dead the messages from Clem's parents yeah. right. that immediately I was like something fucked up is happening yeah. Yeah. and I had forgotten about all that until the very end in the attic when she says that I almost slept through it and you know the second call yeah, woke yeah. me up and yet I'm like Whole, that was like mind blowing. Of like, <laughs> like all of a sudden it became, yeah, this could happen to anybody. I haven't been playing this weird ghost story. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was, was it a? Was there ever a worry that you know, uh, you can sort of tackle the game uh, in uh, whatever order you want? Like if you want to go upstairs first and check it out, you can do that. If you right. want to take a left, uh, you could do that. Um, That's what that, I did. Yeah. Did you take a left? <laughs> yeah. I think most people take a left. I, right? I think I think the I cleared out thing, rooms systematically. I think <laughs> like the, anything that was open before I'd open a door, I'd dump all the things yeah. out and read. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing is, I think that most like gamers, like people that have like a background playing a lot of games, did exactly that, and yeah. that was kind of how. I designed it like you chronologically. Go left, you go left in the Resident Evil mansion. Yeah, so <laughs> there you go. Fly. True, yeah. which you know that foyer is a yeah, little bit of the Resident yeah. Evil yeah. foyer, yeah. a little bit. Um, but I think that you know if you've played a bunch of games, you know like okay, enter this space and you see a big staircase with a door at the top, and you're like, I'm gonna see what else is in here right, first. Exactly. And then you end up in the West Hall and you go through that, and that's kind of chronologically how it starts out. But we've had people like who have played the game at like GDC or, or something like that, or just people who aren't gamers but you know pick up the game. And they're much more likely, interestingly, just to be like, come in the foyer, oh, there's, you know, and they go straight up the stairs yeah. and start exploring up there. And the thing that's interesting about that to me is in a lot of ways, I think they get kind of the more interesting experience because you start at the point where Sam and Lonnie start hanging out and you can kind of, you know, that's an okay starting point. You're like, oh, there's a story about these girls becoming friends and everything. And then you end up back down in the West Hall, and you're kind of filling in the backstory out of order, yeah. which, is, which is interesting, because, yeah, our game supports the idea of, oh, I, I get an idea of what's happening. Oh, now I have more information. I know yeah. what led up to yeah. it. But, yeah, I think that most players, probably most people that, you know, like, read IGN and, and buy it on Steam and everything. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, players like me that yeah. have, like, played a ton of games are, are more likely to kind of play it in the right order. Sure. Right. But we did have to totally say, like, okay, you could play it backwards, and is it still a satisfying experience if you yeah. do? Well, that's, what, that's what's crazy to think about is that when I was going through and I was getting all the audio diaries, I assumed that it wasn't a specific audio thing was in this specific place as much as like finding an artifact cued the, that number list because mine was totally like playing out normal normal and she's starting in a new school this is happening there's yeah. this girl that she thinks cool but she doesn't know how to talk to her blah 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 street fighter and it's like yeah. oh you know yeah, yeah no, I mean, that way. was a uh, that was all level design because <laughs> 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 they are they're totally baked in it's like one object is connected to a specific yeah. audio diary mm-hmm. and if you miss that one you'll just never get it you know you can 100% get stuff out of order because the way that we you know, built it was this object, like the moving invoice in the foyer right. or whatever. She's going to talk about moving in the new house connected with that. So yeah. if we had kind of done it saying like, okay, you'll always get diary three, third, yeah. then the association would start getting really weird, right? right. Um, but that's why we kind of had to rely on the level design and the layout and kind of how the player most likely moves through the space to say like, you'll probably get stuff in basically the right order. And if you miss one thing, you'll still fill in the gaps if you find everything else, you sure. know, that kind of stuff. I love the moment when you pick up the crucifix. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> so that was the one, you were telling us at lunch, that was the one time you designed something on purpose to sort of the, the, with the A very scripted moment. But then there's yeah. also, like, an explanation for it, because you find the invoice of the, electri- the electrician, yeah, and you like, said, well, there's, the, there's faulty electricity <laughs> in the house. And yeah, yeah, it's yeah. great. Light yeah. bulbs often go yeah, out yeah. unexpectedly. So it's, it's really smart. Yeah, I mean, that was the thing, is that we didn't, like... It's interesting because we come from this background of working on games that are very systemic and like our inspirations like Thief and System Shock and Deus Ex and stuff, they're like very much clockwork worlds where it's like the systems of how things work it leads to kind of emergent behaviors and blah, blah, blah. And Gone Home is much more of like a static environment. It's like a place you go and you find stuff. And we still have like a physics system where you try to make everything as like consistent as possible so you interact with stuff mm-hmm. and that's meaningful. But we don't have a lot of, you know, like, like very scripted stuff or, or elements that, like, interact with each other in complex ways. Yeah. But we still wanted to have, like, the feeling that there isn't a ton of you hit this trigger and this happens, you know? Like, so all of the stuff except for that one scripted light bulb is, like, randomized. So, like, thunder and lightning and, like, all the creaky sounds in the house and all that kind of stuff is just on random timers. Mm-hmm. So there aren't any cases of, like, you walk into the TV room and you hit a trigger volume and lightning strikes to like be dramatic but as you play through there are all these different kind of sounds and effects and stuff that might play and so almost everybody I've talked to that's done a playthrough they have at least one moment where they're like 
oh yeah, that time when I opened the door and then the lightning struck right yeah, then, yeah. that was awesome. And I'm like, <laughs> lucky you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't plan I, that. I was going to oh, ask awesome. if, you, if you did plan some thunder cracks because they seem to happen at key moments for me. But. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no. mine was, my, like, you know, I, it, the game did a great job of, I started, I'm like, this is a scary game, and then I started picking up same story, and I'm like, okay, that's a really cool side story. And then all of a sudden it kind of moved from like, I'm investigating if this is a ghost house or whatever. Yeah. I want to know everything about this relationship. And I'd be all like lost in it, like searching around for their artifacts. And then I'd think I'd hear like a whisper or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, and then I'd be like, wait, this is a ghost. I like, would I, think that too. I'm yeah. like, what are they doing? Is there, what kind of game am I playing? I don't know. Yeah. And so it wasn't until like three-fourths of the way where I was like, all right, for real, yeah. this is just a love story. This is awesome. I'm right. having such but a then, good time. Then you start to think this is, gonna, this is ending horribly. Yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yep. find my sister's yeah. body. Yeah. Well, and that, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, when I finally went under those stairs, I was like, oh, no. Like, I, I finally committed and let myself be like, this is a happy story. They're going to yeah, be in yeah. love. And it's like, oh, shit. I mean, it turns out it is a happy story. It sure, yeah. Happening. But it was a bittersweet happiness, right? Like that's, I finished the game, and I was talking to you earlier about this, right? Like when I finished Walking Dead and I listened to that song and watched those credits, it was just like, so sad. And this one I finished, but still, there was something about it that was bittersweet. Just, I guess, in the way of, like, them feeling like they had to run away. Like, sure. and, her, and, like, I, I talked about this, too. Like, her, man, fuck Sam's family, right? Like, the <laughs> parents are like, oh, no, like, oh, no, you know, this is just a phase. And they're like, she's like, it's going to be a long fucking phase. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then on top of that, Katie, as the player, there was the one point when I opened the locker and I moved it, and there's the gentleman's magazine. Yeah, and they, Katie's like, oh, Sam. Like, that's <laughs> that what was, it's, uh, I, I, did you find it in the dad's? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, oh, dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. dad, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, good. Okay, so... Uh, one of the things that I've kind of argued with a few people about, because I feel like the Sam and Lonnie angle is uh, it's pretty clear-cut by the end. You kind of mm-hmm. understand these two characters, their motivations, and, sure. and what they go through. Um, but it's uh, more about uh, the dad and uh, Uncle Oscar, whose house it is. Right. Um, and I, th- I think you can only kind of figure this out, or at least get this, if you opened up that optional safe in the basement. It helps. But, yeah. yeah, so <laughs> in my mind... Uh, Right around the Kennedy assassination, uh, you know, Sam's dad was molested by her uncle. In that sort of bottom, what do you guys? Th- in you that guys sort of, about I didn't, no, no, I, so I haven't talked to, with these two guys. This I is what I this. talked about. Like when I finished it, and I was like, "Oh man, this, it, I was bittersweet. This is great." As the credits are rolling, wait, I'm like, "Fuck! I never opened that safe. There was a safe I passed, <laughs> so, and I expected mm. to run into the." So yeah, so, like, so break it down for so it's kind of these guys. it's this creepy it's this creepy area. There's a height chart for Terry. I saw that. In a creepy area, I don't know who's making a height chart there. Well, if you open up the uh, um, the safe, you find is it ether? Is it there's a there's like morphine okay. in there as well as just some other you know creep- various like yeah. uh, pharmacy stuff. And so if this all lines up with the Kennedy assassination, to me that's why the father is so obsessed with writing books about a time traveler who's going back to try to stop the Kennedy assassination. Because in his mind, he's like, if I could just fucking go back and stop this event from happening, I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't have this huge gaping hole in my heart. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't I know, mean, is, any that, is like, that the only illusion, the safe in general, and the, the height chart that you're going off? Well, of? and also the fact that the, you know they, they refer to it's the psycho house. They refer to the, right, the uncle right, right, is kind of right. creepy. Um, I don't know. I think there were a few more things. Well, I mean, there's just the fact that like there's a couple things you can find in Dad's office as well, where there's like a letter that Oscar had sent to Dad when when he and and the mom got married, yeah. and it's like torn up and then taped back together. And there's just the fact that what's Oscar, the letter say? Um, it basically is like a congratulations letter that's like, I've heard that you're getting married and I'm very excited for you and you're welcome to Arbor Hill, you know, the house anytime yeah. you want to. They'll all understand if you can't accept this invitation or, yeah. or whatever. Gotcha. And so dad has like torn it up and, 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 and pasted it back together. And then it's just the fact that Oscar, who hasn't been in contact with the family for decades, leaves the house to right. dad, you yeah. know, without really any ex- other explanation. So yeah, like, the thing we wanted to do with the story is like, the closer to the present day that the events are, the more access you have mm-hmm. to them, right? So, like, Sam and Lonnie's story, you hear Sam tell you that story in her own words, and it's kind of, like, very, very clearly delineated. Mm-hmm. And then Mom and Dad stuff is just through what you find, and that's a little bit, you know, less direct. And then Oscar's story that, you know, basically goes back mm-hmm. decades and decades since before the family even lived mm-hmm. in the house, you have to kind of do a lot of detective work to to find all these disparate pieces that yeah. are that are pointed at pretty subtly. And yeah, I mean, there's a reason that we didn't want to just like hammer on that stuff. Sure. You know, like like we wanted that to be something that if you really did the detective work, that you could say like I think this is what the story yeah. is behind Dad and Oscar. I think this is why he left him this house is almost like trying to apologize yeah. somehow and that Dad felt like 
oh, I can move into this house because all that stuff is in my past and it won't bother me anymore. But then he moves into the house and he has to like actually confront it, right? Deal with the space. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, the the intent was yeah, Oscar and Terry having this 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 you know history that goes back to this one event in at Thanksgiving 1963, yeah. which is right. You know, like all the stuff that you were saying, it's yeah. basically spot on. But we also wanted that to be something that you really kind of had to dig for mm. and that you had to find all of that stuff and, and really go looking for it as opposed to it being something that's just like out there in the open. Because yeah. I think that the thing that's interesting about how you play Gone Home and how you discover the story in it is like how easy it is to find information kind of also talks about like how well hidden it is even in like the character's you know, minds yeah, almost, yeah. you know. Well, yeah, for me, that's the problem, right? Is that like, I got on the singular track of, I want to know everything about Sam and Lonnie. And so yeah. even when I was getting the mom letters, like her talking to her friend, and yeah. like I was telling you in the, the commentary that's up on IGN, you can, you know, that I thought, oh yeah, she's going to some concert with the tree man. That's great. I don't, <laughs> whatever. Right? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I Literally, know. it's an end. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but like now, like I'm, I'm going to go back and play it, right? And not worry anymore about, is there going to be a fucking ghost around <laughs> Right. Corner and yeah, try yeah. to explore those threads that yeah. I didn't really pick up on. Yeah, and the stuff about um, Dad and Oscar, like it was just—it was like a day or two after the game came out. A, 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 a blogger named Austin Walker he wrote up his like kind of breakdown of how all that mm -hmm. that stuff came together, and it was totally a case of in his write-up he was like, I played through, and it was cool, and you know, like I I felt like I got a lot out of it, but then like I was thinking about it, and I was like there's something else there, you know, between yeah. these characters. And I don't know, and he went back and, like, what, explored the house more until he found all the pieces and kind of, you know, yeah. had enough to add up to, to that conclusion. And that's, like, I think that's, like, as far as from a developer's standpoint, I think that's totally cool, you know, oh, to yeah. be like, yeah. you do your, your one exploration through and you find enough to be like, that was a cool story. But then if you go back and you keep digging, there is more stuff to find, you know. Because um, I was, you know, like, you know, people talk about the game being short or whatever. People talk about, oh, I, I finished it in like an hour and a half or something. But our intent was always, yes, if you want to just get from the beginning to the end, that's not the challenge of the game. The challenge of the game and the value is to say, like, I could spend more time here and I could find more and I don't think that I found everything. And if I go back and just walk through the house again, I'll notice all this stuff that I didn't even realize the first time, you know. So I'm sure you've read, like, a lot of the, uh, you know, the, the commentaries and the, the, the essays after the game came out. Yeah. Uh, is there anything you think that people haven't found yet? Is there anything that still you guys are like, oh, man, no one has written about this yet? Is there stuff like, in, like, Banjo-Kazooie, which is obviously an analog to your game? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it, it took, a like, predecessor. A, yeah. It took, like, a decade for a certain thing to come out. It was, like, something 2008. This, like, Seeker came out. It's like, Jesus Christ. I don't find this in, in 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, haven't, we, we haven't tried to hide anything that hard. Yeah. Like, and there was a... It was even... It was, like, a, the week after the game came out. There's this, um, there's this Easter egg that, that I... I Showed you when yeah. we were when commentary we were on IGN.com. Yeah, <laughs> IGN.com, everybody. Uh, that uh, this like this goofy Easter egg that's 100 percent just like a wacky thing that, that we put in. That you know, I could have let that sit for longer, but like in this day and age, when people are like trying to find a secret like that, they're like streaming it on Twitch or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And so like there were guys that were try like. So the, the the thing that the Easter egg is is involved with is there's 23 audio diaries that you get when you find all of Sam's story, but there's like 24 slots. And so people are like, there's a 24th audio diary, isn't there? And, and I was kind of like, maybe there is, you know? And so they, so these guys on Twitch, they were spending hours, they were like, like four or five hours just like going through the house trying to figure out how to get this Easter egg thing. I just felt so bad for them. <laughs> like I was like, it's awesome you guys are trying so hard. I feel terrible that you're just like, so is there tearing nothing? your hair out. No, no. I, I, so I went into the Twitch stream and I like gave them hints. Yeah. And like eventually they found the thing, you know. But so there's stuff that if we had wanted for it not to have been discovered for yeah, longer, yeah. we probably could have just like not mentioned it, yeah, you know. Yeah. But like, I don't know. It, it's the kind of thing where when we have really obscure stuff like that, if somebody finds it, I think that's cool because like almost no player that just plays it out of the box, you yeah. know, is ever going to encounter that stuff, sure, sure. you know. Now, Gone Home is one of those games that, you know, people seem to love. It has a very, on Metacritic, the critic score is very high and the user score is lower. Yeah. How does that make you guys feel? I, I mean, it's, it's like, 
There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I mean, the the thing is that like almost all of the response that we've gotten has been super positive, and the like we've just gotten like really nice emails from people and stuff. You know, just like personal emails that are just like, this game meant a lot to me. You know, I ident- I identified with this game in a way I never identified with the game before, and like, thank you for making it and all that kind of stuff. Which is that's something that I'm not used to as a game developer. Is somebody just like emailing you directly and being like, this this is like personally meaningful to me and I needed to contact you about it. And those kinds of responses are way more important than somebody voting us down on Metacritic user sure. rating because whatever, you know, because they're like, this isn't really a game or something. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. it's fine. for sure. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, hey, some people want to want to, you know, make that, right. that point through a, through, through a Metacritic score, like, what are you going to do about it, right? Yeah. But there have been so many people that have connected with the game and that have, like, told us about that, that we're way more excited about that stuff. You know, I, on Twitter, obviously, I was talking about the game, and then on Up at Noon, I stopped, before we even did the interview, I told everybody to go buy it, because I wanted them to go in blind. And one of the main reasons I want them to, right, and we talked about this at lunch, is that, you know, I think... Uh, when you're in that moment playing that game, hearing the love story, I think it makes sense, right? And so I think if you have, hopefully, maybe I'm being too idealist, right? But if you had a preconceived notion about g- what it is to be homosexual, you'd see this and maybe understand a bit more. Were you worried when you st- started trying to launch this game or when you put it out that people would go the adverse reaction to it and just be, oh, that's a gay game and blah, 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 blah? I don't know. Like, I mean, I think that you're right, right? That, like, the point of the game is that it's a love story between these characters. And obviously, like, the fact that they're gay is very, like, relevant to their experience because, like, that adds all sure. these other that's factors. Hi- she talks about, you know, hiding it and that mom and dad don't know. No right, and all that stuff. Um, so it's not like it doesn't matter that you know, that, that that's part of the game. But we've, we, you know, we've had a lot of, like, it's been, a lot, it's been cool to see a lot of really positive reactions from people that are just, like you described, not so much that, like, oh, they have, you know, negative feelings towards, like, gay rights or anything, but just, like, we've had pe- a lot of people email us that are like, I was a, I'm a straight dude, you know, I just, I went into your game not knowing what it was about, and I felt, like, this real, you know, sense of like empathy with these characters, and it was awesome to like have that experience through their eyes. Even though it's not how I grew up, you know, it's, yeah. I'm I'm not that kind of person, but I can yeah. totally identify with their experience. And and I think it probably that probably is more effective if you just go in knowing like, oh, this game's cool, and you explore a house and and find stuff, and it's really you know you should check it out, as opposed to. Like you were saying, like, oh, it's about this and this, and it's this issue game, and yeah, I already yeah. know what I'm signing up for before I go in. But, you know, there's, there's only so much you can do about that, right? Because, like, that's part of the premise of the game, you know? So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's, because it's, it's not, it, I, I, it's interesting because I don't want, I, I never want to think of that as, like, a spoiler, you know? Like, the twist is, <laughs> you know? Because that's, that's totally not what it's about. But on the other hand, like, actually going through all the steps yourself and discovering what the story is about while you play through, I think, is it's part of what makes it effective. So, I don't know. Yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard balance sure. to strike. But the nice thing is, you know, we, we, we did, you know, previews. Like, you did a, yep. a preview uh, with us last year, and we did, uh, you know, we sent out review code and everything. And we didn't tell... Journalists like, okay, don't mention this and this. Yeah. You know, we were like, anything you've played, you can talk about. If there's like an obvious spoiler, you know, use your judgment. Yeah. And pretty much almost nobody talked about like, yeah, th- that that the, the that side of what mm-hmm. the game is about. Not because they were afraid of offending people or because they thought it was like a twist or something, but just for that exact reason. If they were like, yeah. I played it. And I would have wanted to discover the whole right. story for myself sure. as a player, so I don't, I don't want to put that into, into to my write-up sure, for sure. that reason. Yeah, it was a tough, uh, like it was kind of a tough game to review, just because it was, like, I'm, I'm not sure of how far I want to go talking about it. Like, right. I had to use vagaries and, like, just talk about relationships in the broadest sense. Um, yeah. Were you worried the, uh, the night before it launched and before the reviews went up, like, how people were going to receive the game? Like, were you guys kind of confident that, uh, you know, critics, you know, most of the sites, IGN, Polygon, across the board, like, really love the game? Uh, Were you worried that you were going to wake up in the morning and it was going to be, like, fours and fives? I, like, I don't, I wasn't worried about that in particular, but I didn't really know how people would, would receive it. You know, like, we were, we were confident that, we made a game that we liked, and you know, like we were happy with it, yeah. right? And that means something. I mean, somebody else is going to like it, but we didn't know if it would be the kind of thing where people would really connect with it strongly and be like, "This is great," or whether they'd be kind of like, 
oh, is interesting. You yeah. know, like uh, we we didn't really think, or we hoped. I don't know. I at least wasn't thinking people were going to be like, this is a piece of shit. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> nobody play this. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I could have seen it totally being a much more lukewarm reception of just like, oh, it's kind of, you know, it's neat. You know, but um, but luckily between, you know, the, the voice actor that we got, uh, Sarah Grayson, is this incredibly talented local voice actor that, you know, delivered this performance that, I mean, you know, I find to, to be really mm-hmm. compelling and, and we're really lucky to, to have worked with her. And just the the... The overall, you know, atmosphere and the story and everything, it it made a really strong personal connection with a lot of people, um, and I'm re- and I'm really happy about that because that's what I couldn't have predicted. You know, whether it would have been like there are a couple people who totally get keyed in and everybody else is is lukewarm on it, or whether yeah, it it was like effective for for more people that played it. And so we were we were really happy to see that that for the most part, um, you know, it, it grabbed people and they felt like it was it was worth uh, touting as something that, you know, everybody should play. Um, and we're just, yeah. We're super grateful for everybody that's, like, taken the jump and tried this game and, you know, paid the money for it and, and played through it, even though it's not exactly, like, something that, that you might have played before, even though sure. you read a review and they're like, don't read this review. Just go. <laughs> just yeah, go buy yeah, it. You know. Yeah. Um, so it, it's been really cool to, to see how people have reacted to it. Mm-hmm. But you you never know what it's going to be like. You know, before you launch. Like I know people that work on, you know, the games. You know, like obviously I know people that that, that worked on Bioshock Infinite because I worked on it. I kept up with them, and you know they're nervous the night before yeah, a sure. launch because they're like, what if we don't? What if people don't like it? You know, because yeah. you get so close to your game yeah. while you're building it that you can never be sure that the thing you made is actually something people well, are like, going to be excited happen. about. Ken come in, is whip them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you, you never know. Anything else that stood out for you guys? I have a final question mm-hmm. for yeah. me. This came from a Twitter kid when I was the day I was recommending Twitter it. Twitter kid. <laughs> Twitter kid. <laughs> at Twitter kid. Twitter kid. Twitter kids, 1976. <laughs> no, he tweeted at me a question that I didn't really have an answer for, but his thoughts, he asked me, do you think the game would be as successful, or at least as critically acclaimed, or as publicly supported as it's being, if Sam was a boy? If it was a gay relationship with two men? Yeah, I mean, I just have, like, I have no idea. You know, I, I don't even know where to, where to start. I mean... Like, when you wrote the story, it, it, well, it, was, it was Sam was Sam, right? There wasn't like, yeah. oh, maybe we do this with the character. It was, it was something maybe that... she's a peg leg. <laughs> <laughs> the pirate some... version of Gone Home. <laughs> yeah, <our> home. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was something where, you know, we, we, we figured out what the premise was, and then Carla and I started talking about it, and we both just started picturing this character, kind of. Mm. And so we were like, okay, we think it's this girl, and she's kind of like this. And, they, and we didn't really have to have a lot of discussion about that because we were both sort of like this is the kind of character we think it would be cool to 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 kind of to portray in in this story like in the 90s you know it's like we we were excited about like the riot girl stuff you know and like zine culture and all that that kind of stuff and it, it seemed like an interesting character to be at the center of the story and the thing is if like all i can say is if it if it wasn't sam and lonnie it would just be two totally different characters, you know? And, like, maybe we would have done as good a job with that. Maybe people would have connected with it the same. It's just, like, that's an alternate reality that yeah. I don't even... I don't even know how to, to, to sure. like, say, like, objectively, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think we would have gotten the I exact mean, same Metacritic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't know, you Isn't know? that question really asking, is, is society more accepting of lesbian relationships than, than gay ones? And I, I don't know, that's kind of a big question. Or if, like, the, or if it was just a straight relationship. Sure. sure. Point yeah, and that would just be another totally different story because, yeah. like, all the factors that they had to deal with wouldn't have, you know would have been other stuff they would have had sure. to, to deal with, right? Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, we made the game we made, and I'm really glad that people could make a connection with it. And yeah, I, I don't know what else could have happened if we if we made something that was different, you know? Well, the game is something special. So congratulations! Thank, Thank you, you for, for making it. We play a lot of games. Yeah. Not a lot. Many of them actually make me feel something. <laughs> right. yeah. No, that's hundred percent. It may be fun, but like yeah. you know, this this game really like meant a lot to me. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate you guys playing it, and thanks for having me on to spoil all the spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> so, spoilers. so many people are like, well, I'm not buying it now. I know <laughs> about it. <laughs> uh, everybody at home, thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more spoiler casts from my Jane Game Scoop. Can somebody make a plush Christmas duck? I want to buy a Christmas duck. <laughs>